Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another found video. And today we're talking about a missing man, Richard Hoagland. But before we get into that, I would like to thank our sponsor for today, June's Journey. June's Journey is a free and captivating hidden object mystery mobile game set in the 1920s with beautiful glamorous scenes and a riveting story. The game is super relaxing and I actually love playing phone games for relaxing. I play little games on my phone all of the time and I really like like this one because it's very mellow. It's a good one for like in the bath or laying in bed. And most of you guys would like it because it's a mystery type game. You're looking for hidden pictures, which are the clues, which will help you solve the overall crime. Playing the game is very relaxing and really lightly challenging. So it's a great tool for self care. It allows you to take time for yourself and improve your sense of observation while having fun. Part of the game is decorating an estate, like a little area, which is fun. I love anything where you're decorating your own little mini space. And because June's Journey is currently celebrating their first anniversary, my viewers can click on the link below and get a free bonus decoration for your miniature estate. This decoration is very rare, exclusive, and can only be received until the 15th of October. So definitely check out June's Journey. Remember, it is completely free. There are links to download it in the description box. Now let's get right into this story. So Richard Hoagland, he was a man from Indiana. He worked for an insurance company, and he'd actually been previously married, but he ended up getting remarried to a woman named Linda Eisler in 1982. Richard and Linda had two sons, Matthew, who was nine at the time, and Doug, who was six. And Linda describes Richard as someone who was a lot of fun to be around. She said that he was really high energy and a very positive person. What did you love about him? Um, he was a lot of fun to be with. And his life seemed to be pretty great. I mean, he had a good income, a nice house, and he often even traveled to exotic locations. They went on vacation. So things were pretty good for Richard and his family. But that all changed on February 10th of 1993. That day, Richard did not come home from work. Linda was at home and she actually got a call from Richard. And at this point, he was still in his office. And he quickly told her that he was feeling really, really sick and he needed to go to the hospital as soon as possible. Now, obviously, as his wife, Linda was like, okay, like, I'll come there. I'll help you get there. But he didn't want to wait for her. He said he didn't have time, and he went to the hospital and hung up the phone. Now, he never told Linda which hospital he was going to either. Obviously, she was really concerned and started calling all of the hospitals trying to see if he was at any of them. And after calling all the hospitals in the area, none of them had record of Richard checking in. What's also weird is Richard didn't take any of his belongings with him. All of his clothes were still at home and his passport was still at home. He didn't pack any clothes. It was cold, it was in February. So obviously Linda was getting really freaked out at this point. I mean, her husband was just missing. Everyone was trying to look for him. They had friends and family out searching. And as a few days passed, there was still no sign of Richard until police found Richard's van in a parking lot at the Indianapolis International Airport. And they believe that the car was just abandoned. Richard's sons were heartbroken and his son, Matthew, was really hopeful that he was going to come back. One day your dad was there, the next day, gone. Gone. I thought, you know, initially you think, oh, okay, this, will, this won't last too long. I'll be back. So time went on and there wasn't much buzz about this case, definitely not much coverage or anything. But what's really strange is that following summer, the boys actually received birthday cards from their dad. And these cards had $50 cash in them. And they were so confused because at this point, they still didn't know where he is or what happened to him or if it was even really him writing these cards. In one of the cards, Richard wrote, maybe sometime soon we will get to see each other. I bet I won't even know you. It has been so long. Mind your mother, dad. So after this, police started seeing Linda as a potential suspect because it was weird. I mean, they were getting cards from their dad who was missing or dead, and that is really odd. So they thought that maybe Linda was just staging the whole thing and that she actually murdered Richard. They didn't know if maybe she was straight up involved in it, but they thought that maybe he was involved in drug trafficking of some sort and that Linda knew something that she wasn't telling them. That maybe she knew that he left and went somewhere because he was in danger or something like that. So the authorities interrogated her. They were thinking that you may have been either in cahoots with him exactly. or you may have bumped him off. Exactly. They interrogated me over and over and over 
and even though they were convinced that Linda knew something that she wasn't telling them, they weren't able to come up with anything conclusive or anything to tie her to it, so the case just remained unsolved. And because Richard was the primary source of income for him and his family, Linda and her kids lost everything. They lost their house, they lost their car. I was broken. And soon enough, 10 years had passed. There were still no leads to where Richard was. No one knew what happened to him. And so at this point, and this is pretty common, the police decided to go ahead and declare him dead. They figured the chances of him being alive are slim to none. Eventually, Linda decided to get remarried and moved on with her life. It's like wounds, they heal slowly over time. However, everything changed in summer of 2016. Linda was settled into her new life, her kids were older, and we'll talk about them in a second, but Linda got a call from Detective Anthony Cardillo of the Pasco County Sheriff's Department in Florida, and he asked Linda if she knew who Richard Hoagland was. Of course, she said, yes, that's my ex-husband, but he passed away, and that is when they told her that he didn't pass away. Richard was actually in their custody at that moment. Can you imagine how you would feel if you were Linda? So I'm sure you're wondering where the fuck was Richard? This is when they found out that Richard had actually been secretly living under someone else's identity. This other person that he took on has been missing since 1993. Police said that in 1993, Richard left Indiana and went to Florida. When he got to Florida, he rented a place, and this is so odd, like what are the chances of this? But while he was living in this house, he found a death certificate. And if you didn't know, you get a death certificate, they actually do give you like basically a receipt, a death, you died. Here's the receipt for your dead loved one. It's kind of weird, but anyway, he found a death receipt for this guy's son, and his name is Terry Szymanski and Terry was a fisherman and he actually died in 1991 from a boating accident. So Richard stole Terry's death certificate and somehow used it to get a birth certificate, which I'm really confused because weren't they like, yo dude, it says you're dead right here. So I'm, I'm a little confused on that. But once he had the birth certificate, he was able to get a license under the name Terry Szymanski and that is when he took on his identity. He even got remarried in 1995 to a woman named Mary and they even had a child together. Mary said that sometimes she would bring up his past or ask questions about his family, but he would always find some way to play it off. Richard ended up buying a house in Zephyr Hills in Florida's Gulf Coast, and he even got his pilot's license. He basically just started a new life. So how did his plan come crashing down? Well, they figured it all out thanks to Ancestry.com. And we just talked about that on Talk Tuesday. This is a great example of how they're using DNA to solve cases like this. But back in 2013, Terry's real family was looking at their family history on Ancestry.com. And this is when they found out that Terry had gotten married two years after they buried him. So obviously they know something is up. However, it actually wasn't until three years after this discovery that they decided to contact the authorities, weirdly enough. In July of 2016, police contacted Richard and said, gigs up, man, like you're caught. And at first he refused to tell them that he was actually Richard. He said, I am Terry, and even showed them his license, which they already knew was bullshit. And that's when they pulled out a death certificate for Terry and Richard finally folded and confessed that he was not Terry. Were you told glad to hear that he was still alive. I don't remember that feeling. And get this, his new wife didn't even know that he wasn't named Terry. Like, she had no idea that he was actually Richard Hoagland. Tonight, the Pasco County Sheriff's Office is investigating what they say is one of the longest and most complicated cases of identity theft they have ever seen. He's living a life. He has a child with his third wife. They have no idea about his previous life. Everything is, in his world, is going smoothly. Nobody has an idea of what's going on. He owns property in Pasco County, Florida. A lot of property, in fact, all of these homes around his house in Zephyr Hills. Homes he rents out, all under a dead man's name. None of his tenants would talk on camera, but I did talk to a barber across the street. Only time I seen him, he just one or two times walking up and back and forth, and I just said, well, Never had much conversation. No, or he never he never introduced himself or nothing. And you'd think that Richard would have a really good reason for just completely abandoning his life, but he really didn't have that good of a reason. 
Basically, he just said that they were having family issues and he wanted to get away from them. So it's kind of like, why didn't you just get a divorce? I mean, he'd already gotten a divorce previously, so it seems weird to just fake your death and get a new identity. Like, that is extreme. <laughs> so Richard was arrested and in February of 2017, he pleaded guilty to aggravated identity theft. Richard served two years in jail, but this past April of 2018, he was released back to Indiana. And this story is actually really sad. I mean, the kids grew up without their dad because of his selfish decision to just leave them and not even give them an answer. I mean, I think that's so cruel. It'd be one thing to leave and say, hey, I'm leaving and, you know, just own up to it that you're a shitty dad. But like, it's a whole nother thing to just disappear and leave your kid to wonder whether or not you're dead. Like, who does something like that? And Richard's selfish acts definitely really affected his family, especially his son, Douglas. When Douglas was in high school, he started doing drugs. It actually started when he broke his hand and he was given narcotics for the pain and he never got off them like so many people. That's how it starts. When Richard was arrested, Douglas was actually already in prison serving eight years for drug possession. And this is crazy, but Douglas actually found out that his dad was still alive because he saw a picture of him on TV with a news reporter talking about how this man abandoned his family and got a new identity. He knew immediately that it was his dad. So while he was in jail, he wrote his dad a letter and here's part of what it said. For a long time, I wondered what was wrong with me that would warrant someone being able to just walk away. I'm sure the big underlying question for everyone is why? What was so bad that you had to disappear? At a very young age, I lost a person that I thought loved me. I had a very low self-esteem and that affected my drug use even more. I used drugs to get my confidence since at times I felt less than I really was. And Linda, as you can imagine, was absolutely furious. I, I mean, she was probably mourning his death for a long time. I just cannot imagine how livid he would be. So she sued his ass, and rightfully so. She basically sued him for child support because he hadn't paid a dime towards his kids in the past 20 years. And in June of 2018, a judge ruled that Richard owed Linda and her sons $1.86 million. However, Richard is currently not in good financial standing. I mean, he went to prison. He's going through a divorce with Mary, who had no idea that his name was not Terry, and his assets are frozen, so it's likely that they won't see a dime of that money. So it's really just a sad story. I mean, these kids got totally screwed by their dad. But I thought it was just so crazy to just up and leave. I find those types of stories so interesting because I cover so many missing persons cases of people that want to be home and want to be with their families and loved ones who are looking for them because they're actually lost. And it's crazy to think that some Someone just like left. I mean, those cases are just super, super weird to me. But that's it for me today, guys. I really want to know your thoughts on this case. So definitely let me know in the comments. Be sure to hit the thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe for more. And that's it for me today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye.